Scott Hamilton is a figure skating icon, having won four consecutive U.S. championships, four consecutive world championships, and a gold medal in the 1984 Olympics. He is passionate not only about winning himself, but about helping others win. Scott, it's so great to have you with us. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> You're winning in lots of ways these days. Oh, thank you. You're winning against cancer, Working against brain hard. tumors, Working as a dad, hard. as yeah. a husband. There's lots of areas in life to win. And you wrote a book about this. I did. Finish first. Winning changes everything. Why are you so passionate about winning? Well, I just feel like it's one of those things that's slowly being deleted from our culture. It's like, you know, competition really fortifies us, builds us. Failure really gives us that feedback that we need in order to be successful. Criticism is really important. All these kind of things that are looked at upon as like negative, like losing. Ooh, I don't ever want to do that. <laughs> I think, you know, we're slowly pushing that away. I mean, we live in a culture of participation trophies. It's like <laughs> whenever I give a speech, I go, how many people in this room like participation trophies? Raise your hand. And it's like, nobody likes them. I go, why do we have them? They're toxic. They're they're robbing our children of their passion. They're <laughs> burning you know, in their belly to get out there and win. And, and it's just, what difference does it make? We're getting to that point of what difference does it make? And, and I really think that's robbing um, people of their, uh, their lives and, and the significance of their lives and, and who they are as people and what they can accomplish because nothing feels better than accomplishment and nothing feels better no matter how big it is. Um, even the tiniest wins, man, they just feed us and they, fortify us and they allow us to go after the next and the next and the next, you know? So I'm big on, you know, building a, a pep talk, you know, and an argument for winning in our lives, no matter what, what you're going after, but to go after it with the same passion as um, you would if you were competing in the Olympics. You've got to live your life fully and that only comes when you can put yourself out there to compete. I think you're an important voice in this conversation because you say yourself, you were an unlikely champion no. in a sense, right? <laughs> yeah. But you are a champion. Well, I mean, I was, I failed every figure test because we used to do the compulsory figures, failed every test because I didn't like doing them, mm. right? And then I'd go to competition and sometimes I'd be prepared a little bit. Most of the time I wasn't. And I would have kind of in inconsistent results. I just didn't know how to do it. And and it, you know, as simple as you know, even when I got into broadcasting, I had to make mistakes and I had to learn, you know, what that was. And in in putting myself out there in public speaking, I had to make a, you know throw up a few stinkers before I truly understood what that was about. And I think a lot of you know we're growing up a, a young culture now that's like you know I'd rather not do that. I'd rather not fail at something. I'd rather mm. just stay kind of right here where it's kind of easy and not a lot's going on and my parents are not nice enough to let me live with them even though I'm 40 and no it's like <laughs> if it, it's it's like I you know I've seen it I I understand what work what and it sounds like it's it's not even hard work and like sacrifice and determination those are all negative buzzwords for me it's about commitment and repetition mm -hmm. you know the more you commit to something and the more you repeat it the stronger and better you get. And it doesn't matter how many times you fail. It, you know, it's, it's, you, if you're a baseball player, think about this. If you only fail two out of three times, you're in the Hall of Fame. Wow. Right? And in, in figure skating, I estimated that I fell 41,600 times. And a lot of those were in competitions and ice shows. <laughs> you know, you're going to fail. The quicker you can get to accepting it and learning from it and growing from it, the better off you are. You know, I've got scars all over my body from all the different medical things and injuries and everything else. And I don't look at them as disfigurements. I understand that that tissue now is stronger than it's ever been. And now I can move forward knowing that that injury is in the past and we can like use whatever I experience for the better, mm. the next. And so many of our young people now, and, and, and you know, a lot of people have never really grown up thinking that competition was important. I had a friend um, who went to college and I, you know, I was training for the Olympics in 1980 and I was, weekends were kind of free because there was no ice time. And I'd say, you wanna go to a movie or something? And he'd say, I, I, I'm, I'm studying for a competition. He competed in the classroom and now he's got this spectacular life. I mean, it's like unbelievable what he was been able to create out of just 
making sure that his foundation was strong in what he did in his education and how prepared he was every time he went in to be tested. And if we all did that, oh my goodness, all oh, ships rise with the tide. Um, our culture, our communities would be so much richer if we would all just roll up our sleeves and put in the work. I think it's so important that you talk about this because you're not somebody who is like naturally gifted and everything came easily and you just won. And I don't know if that person actually exists or we just tell ourselves those stories, but you had to really work hard. And, and you say it's not, it's not these big leaps forward. It's this incremental kind of unsexy day in, day out, just showing up and doing the work. That's it. Then, you know, it's, it's, there's, you know, there's, there's two aspects that are toward the beginning of the book. And one is showing up every day with intention. Like showing up every day, that's a little win. Showing up every day with intentions, a little bigger win. So you want to be a little bit better, you know, after today, or you want to experience something today, or really, you know, spend yourself today in order to be better, or give, put yourself in a position to improve your life, right? And, and you know, <clears throat> when you think about just showing up, it doesn't work. And then you add on to that committing to the long haul. How are you going to fail now? Because you're, you're, it, there's no time limit to your commitment. Mm -hmm. It's like if I don't, if I don't make it in a year, I know I'm uniquely purposed to do this, whatever our purposes are. So you know, we all have our skill sets. We all have our purpose. We all have something about us that's unique. Of the hundred billion estimated people born to this planet, there's only one of you. There's only one of me. There's only one of everybody. Yep. So we've got to take what we've been given and really do everything we can to listen to that voice in our head saying, that'll, that'll bring you joy, that'll bring you success. And, and when you, know, you start creating a winning lifestyle, man, it just changes everything. It changes everything. It changes the way you think of yourself. It changes the way other people think of you. It changes your level of opportunity. It changes, um, you know, not only this year, but the years that follow because you've done that, you put in the time, you've committed, you've repeated, and, and you're now stronger and better than you've ever been. Well, you tell the story in the book about Kyle Maynard who lost all of his limbs, but climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. And I have to tell you, I met him just before I summited Mount Kilimanjaro, just after he summited. So he was crawling down the mountain. I was tearing up and trying to get air. And I saw this man who just summited the mountain with no arms and no legs. And I said to myself, there's absolutely, unless you are dead, there's no reason you're not going to summit at this point. But that's because it. that man just did You it. can always be inspired. You know, there's, <laughs> I'm there, I've met so many people. You know, it's like you look at Travis Roy, who played 11 seconds of hockey. His goal was to play college hockey. And in, in the 11th second, he was paralyzed from mm -hmm. the chest down. Wow. Uh, I, I only think he has use of maybe one arm, but he graduated on time. Mm. Another boy I met, Joel Sonnenberg, he was um, burned over 85% of his body, you know, like disfigured, no ears, no nose, um, no fingers. And um, he was easily the most popular kid in his school. I think he was, when I met him, he was junior class president. And you think about that, you think, well, that's that's uh, it'd be my worst nightmare to be so disfigured and everything. But it's not to him. And he has a beautiful family. Um, it, it's just inspiring to see that he, he just said, okay, yeah, this is who I am. I don't. This is where I'm going. Mm. And then Kyle Maynard, who climbed up Mount Kilimanjaro with no arms and no legs. What's my excuse? Right. <laughs> it's like, come on. It's like, okay. But you know, I, I hear stories all the time. Melinda Doolittle, who lives in this town, was on American Idol. And um, you know, when she was growing up, she so wanted to be a singer, but she was tone deaf. And, and she wanted to try out for the choir and she couldn't hold the, the song together. And so basically the chorus director said, I know how much you want this. You can be in the choir if you promise not to make a sound. <laughs> and so she would do that. And then she would go home and she would practice and sing and sing and practice. And she put herself into the the high school talent show. And her mom was like, don't do it. You, you're you just gonna <laughs> humiliate yourself. It's gonna be hurtful for you. And she prayed on it every night and she worked and she prayed and she worked and she prayed and she worked. And she went out, blew the roof off the place, full standing ovation. And she knew that that's what she was gonna do for the rest of her life. 
It wasn't she wasn't going to be denied just because she just happened to be tone deaf. <laughs> just a small little and thing. And couldn't sing a note. Just, you know, it's like, <laughs> I want to be a singer. Yes. <laughs> I mean, faith in the process and, and showing up every day and just doing the work and, and, and nothing replaces that. So there's so many examples of people that have risen above. And, you know, like Wilma Rudolph, polio as a kid, she became an Olympic sprinter. Mm. I mean, th- they're, they're everywhere. And, you know, when we look and say, oh, I don't know. If you're able-bodied, there's no excuse. Mm-hmm. You, you just got to get up and just do the work, you know, and, 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 and honestly respond honestly with the challenges that are put in front of you. It's like, okay, how am I going to do this? And figure it out because it's, everything's possible. It's, I live in the world of possible. It's so good because, you know, if you ever read the Bible and really look at it with uh, objective eyes, God loves to take the most unlikely person and do the most unlikely things with them. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about how faith um, comes into the story of success. Well, I, I just, you know, I, the more I kind of connected the dots, the more I realized that, you know, um, he's always there. Always. And when I really feel low or when I feel like, um, you know, things aren't going my way, something usually happens that allows me to see God. When I was going through my um, brain debacle of 2010, I was in um, neuro ICU and I was just, um, I was just, you know, praying because I didn't know what else to do, because I was scared, because um, an artery was nicked, it became an aneurysm, and if that blew, then my life was gonna be forever different, right? So they were keeping an eye on the aneurysm, they had me in their OCU, and, and um, this nurse came in, and to this day, I don't even think she truly existed as a human being. I think she was an angel, because she gave me exactly what I needed to strengthen myself in my faith, to know that I was gonna be 100% okay. Mm. She taught me how to pray. And I just, I'm, you know, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. The world will try to diminish it, try to, you know, put the light of the world, you know, under a bushel basket. The world will try to hide all these things. But I, you know, I, I, I don't know, I just, I really wanna look at the world differently. Again, I wanna look at the world as everything's possible. And if it's in your heart, if it's in your mind, then it's incumbent upon you to chase after it with everything you have. And if you do, good things are gonna happen. And if you fail, get up and try again. Again, 41,600 times my rear end (laughs) hit the ice. (laughs) And sometimes it wasn't always my rear end, you know? So you just get up and you just brush yourself off and get, try it again. Try it again, try it again, try it again. You know, I meet little skaters all the time and I tell them 41,600 times. Oh. They'll tell me, I didn't fall today. I go, you didn't try hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also, you know, drowning out all the naysayers. You know, I have had judges tell me that I'm too short to be competitive internationally. It's like, okay, how am I going to fix that? You know, but it's, you know, you, you edit your critics, you know, it's all unfinished first. You edit your critics, you figure out what's fact and what's opinion, and you just use what you can. If it's fact, if somebody criticizes you and it's fact, that's a gift. Mm-hmm. It's not condemning. It's not, it's like, thank you. I have something to work on. I'm so grateful for that. But if they, if they throw something at you, like on social media, you know, I'll put up tweet after tweet after tweet and speeches and it'll, It'll just be all the horrible things people say about me on social media, just because they can. Mm. And I tell you know young people all the time, I go, two things. One, they would never say it to my face. And two, nothing they said actually helps me. So I delete it. What else do you do with that? It's garbage. It doesn't belong in my life, my world, my mind, my heart. Yeah. Just delete and, and, and move forward. I really want to encourage people to understand um, that there are tons of opportunities for them. They just got to rise up and chase after them. Finish First, such a great book. I really enjoyed it. I love this conversation. Thank you so much, Scott, for visiting with us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. 
Hey, YouTube fans, we're adding new stories just like the one you're watching right now every single day. Wow, so yeah, if you haven't already, just take a moment, just a second, and hit that subscribe button. <laughs>